All right, there's one last item that's jumping out to me that I want to grab before we go. Here we are, Saturday morning, looking for our state sale. It should be somewhere up here on the left. And I think we actually, yep, it's right here to the left where that truck just passed. So it's right behind there. So we gotta find a spot here. It is a little tricky. We got the guardrail. We don't have a lot of room. So glad I got here early. Let's try to find a spot. All right, well, I parked my car right along the guardrail. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is pretty secluded. So uh, we're gonna go down there. I'm gonna check things out, uh, see if there's a list. Doesn't look like there's too many people here because uh, once again, we are out in the countryside and uh, this is real exciting. So uh, let's get over there and uh, see what's going on. All right, well, I just went down there and uh, turns out there's no one here but me, actually. The other cars there, they're from the workers. So uh, once again, second week in a row, I am first in line at this estate sale and looks like there's a lot of stuff in there too. I got a peek in the garage, so it's a full house. So I've got my boxes. Let's get them out of the primetime treasure mobile and head on in there. Oh yeah, and when I said that I'm going in, I'm going in now, 25 minutes early. They said, no sense in you waiting here. There's no one else around, come on in. So let's go. <laughs> All right, down this hill, and we'll make our descent through the garage and into this pretty cool secluded house. So I always look for these, the uh, artificial snow that you could blow out through the aerosol cans. And this is a nice big one. Usually they're shorter and you just shake it to determine how full it is and this is mostly full so uh, these sell very well uh, this is a good first pickup definitely want to give this one a double tap and just a little tip you could even tell how vintage it is based on the way they uh, did the font on the back because they just don't look like this anymore on the modern cans also this uh, way that they designed the uh, spray dispenser up top uh, also classic so very cool So moving up from this shelf and down here, uh, there is a bin. You could actually buy the entire bin if you want for five bucks. Now I don't want the entire bin because most of the stuff in the bin is actually not uh, worth much, including these uh, old uh, printer manuals and stuff. I mean, you know, you could look them up from uh, time to time. You might find one that is pretty popular that's retro that people want, but. And even these old floppy disks, there's not a big interest in the Packard Bell ones. But this is pretty interesting because Lotus is a, a popular name. And so this being sealed and having the disk in it is a good selling point. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to get it for almost nothing and uh, should be able to sell it for like you know, 25 bucks or so. 20 to 25 bucks. So we'll add this one in here. Give it a double tap. So that's where I just came from and over here I uh, saw this which is really nice, nice and vintage, this Craftsman uh, miter. It really looks nice, it works fine, has a nice uh, rusty patina to it and this green sticker means it's only a dollar. So this is about a $35, $40 piece so I'm definitely going to pick this one up and add it to the box. All right, it's always good to look below the tables. You never know what you're gonna find. And we've got a tub of VHS tapes here. Now, a lot of times people skip over VHS tapes, but they're worth taking a look at because first of all, you could usually get them pretty cheap, as you could see here, five for a dollar. But you never know. Um, as you dig through, you might find something like this. So as you can see, 
these down here are sealed. And if you have a popular title, like Indiana Jones, especially if you could find other ones. So we've got The Last Crusade, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and let's see what this one is. Uh, and A Temple of Doom. Now you have a trilogy, and uh, that's great. There's going to be somebody out there who collects these who are going to want these and sometimes people will pay up a lot of money for sealed vhs it just depends on the a title uh, but this is definitely a good one so we're going to give this a uh, i think the first ever primetime triple tap you know i think i'm going to add this to the lot as well because uh, even though we have readers of the lost ark in here sealed this is a different cover and so i could add it to the lot and it'll add value to a collector Uh, and this is what I'm talking about when I say you have to pay attention to the titles when you're looking at sealed ones. Don't just pick up every sealed VHS because Driving Miss Daisy, uh, sorry, even though it has the name Daisy in it, no one really cares about this one from a collector's perspective. Now these are pretty cool. Uh, tempting to pick up but just from looking at them because we have just started August and Halloween's not too far away and the price point on these is very nice, two bucks. Uh, but uh, since they are made in China and there's a ton of them around, yeah, you're lucky if you could get like 10 to 15 bucks out of them with the shipping. So, you know, for that reason, I'm going to pass on them, but they do look nice. All right. So over here, there's a bin with bunny plush. <laughs> so uh, these two up top caught my eye because they're really shiny and I like the silver color. Initially, actually, for me, uh, figures being a guy, it reminded me of a Playboy bunny. Uh, and this is the one that I saw first. So I was like, hmm, is this a Playboy bunny? But then uh, I saw this one next to it and I said, hmm, this kind of now reminds me of like the American Gothic uh, painting in a way. So I, I figured there's a couple out there that likes bunnies. And so, you know, people get stuff like this to represent themselves and I want to display it in their house and a at a dollar each uh, I figure this is a can't mess so uh, and I think this is a nice selling point with the shine so uh, no makers uh, a tag on it or anything like that but I think they're cool and I could be pretty creative with my description so there you go you two could cuddle in there no hanky panky in the primetime box All right, time to head inside the house. All right, here we go. Oh, wow, this looks cool in here. I love the wood paneling. Very nice. I like the art on the wall, too. Very cool. They want 20 bucks a piece on it, so I don't like it that much, but, oh, 25 bucks a piece, yeah. So, but very cool. Let's explore. All right, let's take a look in here. Ooh, we have more art to look at. Okay. And then, oh, we've got books, DVDs, magazines. So we'll see if there's anything good in here. Um, if I find anything I like, I'll let you know. All right, so over here, I'm definitely going to go for this one and this one because I love the gilded look to it for one. Uh, number two, uh, they're in great shape. They would sell well as a set or individually. Uh, they're definitely vintage. And I love the religious theme to it. Anytime you have something with uh, Mary and uh, Jesus, uh, this, is, this is great. So I'm gonna pick this up for sure. Hey, prime time. Oh no, not now. Especially not now when I'm dealing with religious items. <laughs> hey. Over here. I don't see you. Where are you? The other side. Hey, big guy. Oh, hey. It's uh, Mrs. Primetime. <laughs> Every single time. Oh my gosh. It looks like this is vintage. Uh, the artist is Bernard. This looks like a print though. Oh my gosh. What should I do, folks? What should I do? Why don't you look on the bed to help you make your decision? Look on the bed. Um, oh, this must be what you mean. This looks very similar in style. 
it's five bucks. And yes, the artist is the same, Bernard. Okay, now this one is in the frame, so we can't tell the age unless we popped it out of there, but it's probably very similar to this one, which is 1943. So, you know, now to make this a combo deal, five bucks for this one, 10 bucks for this one, it's like 750, plus all the other great deals I'm getting. Uh, I think I'm gonna pick this up. This is a nice set, and uh, especially the deal on this is also great. So, you know, nice. Nice art pieces here. All right, now moving on from there, as you could see, we have some ballerina art. Now, this is definitely vintage, and it's uh, 10 bucks a piece. It really stands out, and it's in really decent shape overall for the age, probably from the 1950s, I would say. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think, but I like this. I could sell it individually or as a set. Let me know what you would do, individual, set, how much would you ask for it? I think these are great. These are gonna frame up nice. That's something that I mentioned, by the way, uh, in my listings. I say these will look amazing in a frame, but uh, wow, I'm gonna pick these up. These are incredible. Wow, love them. Here we go. Definitely, oh yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble if I don't do this. People are gonna get mad at me, but we're gonna get a double tap for you and a double tap for you. All right, no luck in the books and media area. There is nothing here I could find of significant value. It's a lot of overproduced DVDs and VHS tapes that aren't worth anything. I did explore to look to see if there were any sealed ones, but there were not. Um, as a related point with treasure hunting, make sure in situations like this, when you have a barrier to entry like this chair, they either pull it out or you reach in to see if you could find any treasures. More often than not, you will find something uh, back there worth getting, but not in this particular instance. There are a lot of uh, modern uh, bulk magazines that aren't worth getting either, and just a lot of common books. You know, there are some vintage things, but whenever I would come across them, there'd be something wrong with it. Like, I love this book here and would have picked it up because of all these great, uh, gorgeous hairstyles inside, but uh, all of this fraying on the side really presents a problem uh, for collectability purposes. And, you know, normally I would go for the older uh, Bibles. We've talked about that before. But this one dates to 1977. I like the gilding on the side of it, but I could tell that this should have had a dust jacket on the outside of it. And I don't like the fading uh, on the side because it doesn't display well. And people like things to display well on their bookshelf so they could tell what it is. I like the Fu Manchu series, but again, you could tell that this had a dust jacket at one point and now it doesn't. So. I'm going to pass on it. Don't get me wrong, you can uh, do well picking up some older books that don't have uh, book covers on them, don't have the dust jacket anymore, uh, but usually they would be ones that are much older than this and much harder to find. All right, so we're going to move on from that section over to this room. I love the old look of this house. Uh, I'm sure many of you like the vintage uh, flowery wallpaper as well. So there's some neat items to keep looking at, some more rooms to explore. Uh, these are five bucks. They're vintage paperweights. You could tell that from the bottom. You could see the um, faded sticker and the faded look to the base. Uh, so you could probably market these uh, you know, during Christmas time because they are deer, kind of like reindeer related. So uh, for five bucks, I think I'm gonna pick them up. They have a nice weight to it, nice and heavy. Um, good construction so um, but you know always make sure you check the labels because even though this um, might look old when you flip it over you can see that it's just a modern uh, decorative thermometer so you know but if something like this was vintage I would definitely pick it up but for now we'll get these two we're gonna move out from that section to this room you know umbrellas could be something worth picking up uh, especially when the price point is only a dollar, but I don't see anything about these that uh, make me want to grab them. Nothing stylish enough or fancy enough. I mean, this would be the closest one because it's kind of cheetah printy, but um, I think we're going to leave it here. Uh, now, yeah, sometimes I double tap something that I like, but I don't always pick it up. Someone mentioned that in the comments once. Uh, over here, 
uh, I do see something double tap worthy, and we're going to pick this one up. These are Vogue ads that would stand up, display in a store. Price point's only a dollar on it. Um, these here, uh, you know, I, I think I'm going to pass on these ones because there's nothing on them that really jumps out to me. I like the ones with the lovely ladies on them. So I'm going to grab these for two bucks. And uh, this vintage clown is kind of cool looking. Oh, it's a clown coin bag. Wow, this thing is neat. So yeah, check this thing out. It is super cool. Kind of freaky. Maybe I should put it in the refrigerator for Mrs. Prime Time. Oh my gosh, let's see, look at this. So this thing is cast iron. And look, the hand goes up to the mouth, I think to put the coin in. So let's, um, Let's check it out. There's a lever back here, and we'll see. We'll just press it down. And, yeah, look at that. Here, look at that. That is so cool and creepy at the same time. Oh, that is very neat. I love the uh, look of this thing. It is so cool. Uh, made in Taiwan. I don't hear any coins in it. Um, hmm, you know, these things, I think they require a key to open it up. And I don't have the key, so someone might have to fool around with it to make it work. I don't hear any money in it or anything, so uh, circus people would love this. What do you think? Should I pick it up for the 40? I'm going to have a hard time passing up on this. I think I'm going to go for this. This is very, very cool. Wow. Look at that. Now, unlike this one, which moves, uh, this one is also cast iron. It is a bank bird design, uh, but it doesn't move. It sounds like there's a couple of coins in there, but um, I really like the motion aspect of this, and this one has better marketability uh, for the $40, so you know, if I'm gonna pick which one to spend the 40 on, I'm definitely gonna go with this one. And in a prime time first, we're gonna have an item give itself its own double tap. You know, I literally have no internet access right now, so you know what that means. That means we're off the grid. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, let's head out from here. There's my box filling up and into this area over here. There's another room over there to check out. All right, glass fans. Everyone loves me to pick up something breakable here and there. I like these vintage ashtrays, uh, especially since they stack. So that's pretty cool. I like the color. It's like a yellow green and doesn't look like there's any chips, cracks, breaks. They've got some nice air bubbles in them. They look good under the light too. So I'm going to grab these for 10 bucks. Put them right in here. And you're really going to like this. Check this out. This is an amazing cast iron tub. Look at those footings. Wow. This thing is super heavy. I don't think I'd fit inside of this or, you know, maybe be a tight squeeze, but my legs would be hanging off the side, but definitely cool. Wow, awesome, love the footings. And this is the rest of the bathroom if you're interested in seeing. Um, you know, nothing here I'm gonna pick up with uh, these towels and uh, nothing really jumps out to me with these birdhouses, but uh, Anyway, interesting room, especially with that tub. And uh, we'll move out to the next area. All right, so this pantry uh, area is kind of interesting. Um, if they would have had the top to this, I would have looked into getting it, but that piece seems to be missing. Um, I did look into this earlier, it was in the garage, but the problem is when I uh, opened it up and looked inside, uh, the uh, filter area was in really bad shape, so uh, passing up on that one. The price on it was four. Um, but what I do like is this clock hanging on the wall. Look at this. It works. It's got this nice vintage look to it. It's uh, General Electric, and it's plug-in. You could see there the old plug. Nice old back to it. I mean, this is really neat and there's not a price on it, which means this is going to be cheap. I wouldn't expect it to be more than five bucks. So we're going to pull it out of there 
and uh, yeah, that's really neat. I love it. I love the green on it, and I love those paint swirls on the back too. Very cool. Let's uh, toss it in the box. Aha, look what I found. This is what happened. Someone must have broke it, and no, it wasn't me. I'm just showing you. I really just saw this for the first time. So, um, huh, that's a shame. All right, let's head out of here. I want to show you what lies beyond the kitchen area. So cool. That's why I love going to these old houses. Check this out. All right, so we're going to move from there to here. Not much in the kitchen, really, sourcing-wise. You know, it's a lot of common items, common books, you know, common mass-produced plastic cups, some ceramics. We're going to move on here, but imagine back in the day, you made something to eat here with your family, and then you came out, oh, look at this. This is a nice chandelier. It's very cool, but check this out. And you come out here, and you are in the middle of the woods with this table and it is so peaceful i'm just going to stop talking for a second so you could just get a sense of this out here this is beautiful i love this stuff i love the woods I love being in the middle of the woods like this and pr protected from the bugs. You've got the screen here all around. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. I would absolutely love this. And you know, one of the reasons that I make my YouTube channel, it's not just for sourcing and money making and everything. It's also partly to document some of these places that I go to. Is I like to look back at it and you know it just brings me good memories and this is something i'll definitely look back on because this is one of the nicest outdoor rooms i've ever sat in and can you imagine what this would look like if you have this all cleaned up and everything get all this stuff off of here it would look incredible wow amazing all right so we have some pretty interesting things here to check out uh, right when we come out of the uh, kitchen area I've shown before how I've done well with mushroom uh, latch hooks and they often have this color of the orange and the brown and this dish towel uh, fits the bill for me. I'm definitely going to pick this up. It also has some fringed edges on it. It does have a little staining but that's going to be very easy to get that out. So we're going to pick this one up and then I also like this one here with the um, roosters on it this is pretty neat let me open this up so you get a better sense of the size of it it does go out a bit here so very cool i like this one this is just go out on the table and you know put your, put your awesome country food on it very cool so i know sometimes i do get people telling me make sure you pick up the vintage linens make sure you pick up vintage linens so in honor of all of you who have told me that over the years uh, i did find two here that i like that i'm going to pick up so let me open them up and i'll show you all right so as you can see here i just laid out this big tablecloth and i really like the uh, prints on it this flower design is really neat so uh, the colors really blend well together i like the yellow the green and the blue the ones all the way around don't see any major problems with it uh, i guess it's i don't know you tell me in the comments is it technically a linen if it's a tablecloth I, I i don't know i i need to brush up on that but a very very cool piece so we're gonna grab this one uh, let me show you the other one all right so this is the other one i actually like this one even better uh, I like that we have two people on it and we have some nice scenes like the windmill and the flowers and the trees in the country background. Uh, the embroidery uh, work on it is terrific. It's an excellent shape. So we're definitely going to pick uh, this one up too. So I just found out uh, from talking to some folks that the kitchen used to be in this area and then they added this on at a later point to the old farmhouse. The old farmhouse was made in the 1800s 
Uh, there is a basement, but they said they pulled everything out of there, and otherwise it's dingy, nothing to really explore down there. It's not even open to the public, but there is an upstairs, so we're gonna head up these stairs and see what lies up there. Look at this, hold on, look at this. We've got a duck. Let's check this out. Old duck decoy. I think I'm gonna pick this up because I picked up that other one at the other sale for $30. And this looks like it's hand carved. Very cool. Let's grab the duck. All right, go right there. And see how that camouflaged itself right up there on that wood? Um, a lot of people probably walk right by that, even though going up and down the stairs. But, you know, just keep your eyes peeled for stuff like that. All right, so just came from upstairs and heading into this room. Uh, if Noelle Farm Girl Scavenger saw these, uh, she'd probably swipe them all up, especially at this price, 10 for a dollar on the patterns. Uh, the thing is though, for me, is that it's really a lot of bulk to take on right now for what I would get out of it. Don't get me wrong, I, not the bulk in and of itself, but there's a little bit of money to be made. The problem for me is that these come from the 1980s. So we've got uh, the, a lot of the Butterick Simplicities uh, and McCall's, but you could usually find the dates uh, somewhere on the bottom. So like, I'll grab another one out here and see if we could find a date on here. Um, but the ones, the ones from the 40s and 50s would be the ones that would give you more money. But, you know, je see here you can see 1982. That's generally what these are. They're from, the, they're from the 80s. But like, if you're trying to sell large lots of them from the 80s and 90s, you might not even get a buck a piece with the shipping. Uh, again, much older, you could, you know, you could get more out of it. And there could be some individual ones that you could make more on, but you know, I'm not seeing anything here that jumps out to me for that purpose. So I am gonna pass on these, but you know, could be a good deal for someone who's really interested in sewing stuff. All right, this is where it really would be handy to have Jocelyn, the crazy lamp lady here, <laughs> because I would love to get her input on these. Um, this smaller one here for five bucks has some cracking on the inside of the shade there. It also doesn't work. Uh, now it could be because the bulb is um, busted or something like that, I don't know, but it is plugged in in the back. So that's a little bit concerning. Um, these here, very interesting. They are solidly constructed. They're definitely vintage, which you could tell from the plug. I won't know if they work until I get back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters. I've shipped stuff like this before. It's a little bit of a pain. What I'm thinking is picking up the set and selling them on Facebook Marketplace to somebody. Uh, so it'll be 30 bucks total and, uh, you know, Hopefully, you know, we can make a nice profit on them if they work. So it's a little bit of a of a gamble, but I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get these. I'm gonna see if I can find a light bulb to test out these uh, lamps before making a final decision on it. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> Got the light bulb then. Ah! Oh, oh, what? What is that? It was flickering a little bit. It's gotta be loose. There must be a loose connection in there. Yeah, inside you in mean? The, where the knob is, I would it, say. Yeah. Huh. It's <laughs> trying to catch it. Hmm. That's weird. We could try the other one out and see. All right, here's the second one. Let's see. Huh. I wonder if it's the bulb. Let me I think ahead. it's the bulb. Let me get a different bulb. All right. I feel like I'm in a weird. I feel like I'm in a weird science episode. <laughs> it might be the little clicky thing. It could be, but both of them, that's the same issue, which is weird. See, it almost went on. Huh. Oh, that one just wasn't on tight enough. So that one's good. That makes me wonder. We'll try the other one again, because that one's working now. All right, good. 
Yeah, so we're trying the other one. Same thing's still happening, even when it's screwed on as tight as possible. So it's trying to catch, but, and we tried the other light bulb, right? It didn't yeah. work either, so. Yeah, I think there's something wrong in terms of the wiring inside, which could be fixed, but I don't think I'm gonna mess with it. I'll, I'll grab the other one though, but yeah, too bad. All right, so we're gonna move on from there into this room over here, which is like a, another crafting room. And uh, this I am going to pick up. These are vintage needlepoint uh, pillow kits, three bucks a piece, still sealed. A little bit of wrinkling on the cardboard, but that doesn't matter uh, because the uh, kit itself inside is intact. So we've got one that is leaf, one that is the smiling sun, another smiling sun and another leaf. So I probably would sell them as a, a set, the leaf and the sunburst, and then once that's sold, you know, saw off another one. So we're gonna add these to the box. All right, and right over here, this was folded over a little bit. So sometimes just unfold it. I really like this fabric design with the girl and the dog. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Daisy a little bit with how she looks with that Shih Tzu face. So, uh, oh, really cool, look at that. It's kind of like a flower top, almost like a, almost kind of looks like a shower head in a way. But uh, this is really neat. I'm gonna pick this one up. Oh, there's some various uh, sketch pads and stuff and some craft books, but uh, nothing that I see here that jumps out to me that has any significant value to it. There are some fabric patterns here, but again, uh, nothing here that really jumps out to me in terms of style. I mean, a lot of stuff just looks kind of, you know, faded to me or, you know, relatively plain. So, yeah, so I'm going to pass up on these. Uh, I did look through some of this stuff already. Um, so again, nothing really catching my eye and uh, we're going to explore some other rooms. All right, so coming out of here, there's my box. Into here is a paint room and that's mostly what you have in here is a lot of uh, old paint, some hardware, uh, but again, you know, it, it's, it's mostly modern stuff actually. There's no real vintage stuff to speak of in here. So um, we're gonna move on to the other room. Oh, I should mention, uh, and you know this if you've watched some of my older estate sale videos, but sometimes I will go for the uh, old Al staple boxes or some other staple boxes like this. The problem is that uh, a lot of these don't even have that many staples in them, so that's why I'm, I'm passing on these. All right, so moving on from the paint room, which was right here, uh, this is the master bedroom. So uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, what immediately jumped out to me was this <laughs> kind of looks like a mermaid, uh, but unfortunately you've got uh, some pretty deep set staining. I mean, this isn't even something that would wipe off. I mean, it's really, it's really messed up. So, uh, you know, I mean, I guess you could, I don't know how hard that would be to pop out. I mean, it's the original glass. People would like the vintage glass. So. Yeah, I'll leave that here, but this is very interesting. Kind of reminds me of strawberry shortcake, although there is no strawberry, but this thing is super heavy. I mean, it's really, I mean, probably can't tell because I'm lifting it up like this, but yeah, I mean, it's solid. I mean, wow, I mean, this is something really meant for the garden. I could ship it, but it might be better to do on Facebook Marketplace, I mean, you know, it's white, so someone would have the opportunity to paint this up if they wanted to. And so, you know, that could be appealing to someone. We do have some tokens here. I'll just pick them up here. Some of them are Shriner tokens. So you don't normally see that too much. So we'll just add them to the box here. In fact, I actually had to separate my uh, two boxes here so I could accommodate the big giant statue here. And that head is so big that we definitely have to give it a giant double tap. <laughs> Sorry, those are mine. Oh, yeah, I don't to the boxes there, yeah. Sorry. All right, so moving on from that area over there, we have got a few totes of DVDs, and the price point is a dollar. They are DVDs, not CDs. They just put the wrong thing on it, but. Um, for the most part, you know, we have some good movies here, but, you know, even though I love some of these movies like Cobra and Commando, 
<laughs> oh my God, Commando, such a good movie. So many great lines in there. But um, I'm mostly looking for a DVD set. So you can see here we have Game of Thrones, uh, seventh season. And then down here we have the sixth season. So that's great because I could compile them together. And, you know, while it's helpful to have an entire series at once, you know, sometimes people buy these a season at a time, you know, because that's just, you know, how they like to go about it. That's just how they do it. And so, you know, someone might come across, you know, that I have six and seven, they're up to season five. And, you know, that's my buyer. It might take a little longer to find them, but, you know, that would be my buyer for that. Uh, Downtown Abbey, uh, limited edition, seasons one, two, and three. Uh, and it looks like it comes with an extra here. So, Secrets of High Clare Castle. Uh, yep, that's a bonus documentary. So, that's cool. So, we'll get that. Uh, we've got a box set down here with fringe. But it's, you see the space here? It's missing one of the fringes. So, uh, here we go. So, it was out put it in there and that's the complete and final season so you know you have the complete set so that's nice we'll get that out of there and uh we'll pick that up let's see if there's anything else that stands out here to me um here's complete first season of rain uh here's another game of thrones that's the second season and that's the first season so that's a few more seasons of that. All right, and sometimes what will happen is that the DVD seasons will be spread out. So you can see here, we have the complete uh, first season of Last Ship, and then we have the second and third over here, and then we have the fourth and fifth over here. So, you know, be on the lookout for that as well. Sometimes they're not all gonna be neatly stacked directly uh, against each other and sometimes you got to do a little bit of a treasure hunt but you know that's what happens sometimes and uh, that's how you could get some nice little collections like this i'm going to pick this one up because uh, even if i don't sell it i'm just going to uh, watch it myself i love that this is a five disc set and speaking of multi-disc sets check this out you've got lex the complete series all here, one, two, and three. Look at that, 374 minutes, 960 minutes, 637 minutes. I mean, that's crazy. They crammed a lot of stuff onto this uh, DVD collection here. There's a bunch of different DVDs stacked inside of there. So it's not just one, of course. And then here's another one. They've got this one. Okay, so it's season four as well. Okay, so it's two. Uh, DVDs together to make up the complete series. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Look in here. Downtown Abbey seasons four and five. Look, that'll match up with our one, two, and three. And then I know I saw another Downtown Abbey around here. I, I'm pretty sure I saw number six. So where is it? Where are you, number six? Uh, you're here somewhere. I know you're here. You're not going to escape the primetime treasure hunter. I'm going to find you. Where are you? There you are. Uh, all right. Some of you are probably yelling at me to grab that. <laughs> but uh, okay, look at that now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. All right. Nice stack of DVDs extracted from here. And while I was doing that, by the way, someone had literally taken her out and uh, was going to leave with her, but I had to uh, stop her. So uh, that at least shows me someone else is interested in this strawberry shortcake looking statue here. All right. So next to the bedroom, there is this closet that has a bunch of you know, old clothing in it and some uh, old shoes. So they're not new shoes in the box. But uh, this one cracks me up because when I was a teenager, I used to love the pretty girls who wore the candies. So I had to take this out <laughs> and show you. First of all, I love the box. And um, these are these candies, high heels. But as you can see, they are, um, they are well-worn. But 
Let me know in the comment section if you used to rock the candies back in the day. Uh, I'm gonna pass on these for that reason. They're all pretty much like this. They're all scuffed up and stuff. Cool to see, but not for me. All right. All right, so if you're wondering how I navigate this with the boxes, uh, I just pulled them in here separately and uh, put the sold sticker up top. So that'll deter some folks, hopefully. Uh, this stamp album is vintage. It uh, does have some stamps in it, which helps. It does have a chip, but the chip is on the back, which is less worrisome than if it was uh, on the front. You know, it's, uh, it's nice and old. So I'm going to pick this one up because I still have some stuff left over from that vintage stamp collection. So uh, this one comes from the 1950s and uh, I've done well with the stamp books in the past. So we'll, we'll put that right in there. All right, now we have to go back down to the end of the hallway. All right, look what we have here. I mean, she is absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, she may be related to someone who was in this house, but we're going to pick this up because someone is definitely going to like this to display. And then, um, this is pretty cool too. It kind of reminds me of Daisy. Uh, you know, I'll either sell, it's a rock and it's painted rock. It has some nice weight to it. So I'll either sell it or give it to Mrs. Primetime. <laughs> we'll see. But, uh, oh boy, we have found some amazingly beautiful women lately at these cells. Incredible. Oh look, another mushroom item. Three bucks, definitely vintage. It's got that cheesy green felt on the back of it. <laughs> oh my God, but someone's gonna love this. This is so cool. So I'll add this here. We are really piling up. This is a pretty epic day, folks. Oh, and if you're wondering, there is this lamp down here, which is cool, but unfortunately uh, it has been cracked. So split wide open right there. That's why it's only a buck, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. All right, so moving on from that area, we do have some figurines here that are just a buck a piece, unless otherwise marked. Uh, but the ones I'm gonna go after are just a buck. And that would be this one here. Uh, shout out to Baritone Man. Uh, I know he likes this one. This is the Jesus Infant Son of Prague. Uh, I've talked about this one before. It is one of the most popular sellers. Uh, always look for the uh, orb in one hand and then you've got the uh, crucifix top and this kind of poofy uh, hat, uh, this type of uh, fringed robe. Uh, it comes loose from the base there. You could glue it to it if you wanted to, but uh, it does come loose. Uh, I've purchased this in uh, very large sizes and in small sizes, sells very well. So uh, we're gonna grab that one. And uh, before I take that one off, there's also this one here uh, that I like, uh, the angel. You know, Christmas is coming. It definitely has a nice vintage look to it. If you turn the bottom, it plays a little song. I'll show you. <laughs> All right, now there's a couple other ones I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab this one with uh, Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. I like that this is permanency stone, which you could see here. It has these nice little divots inside of it, which gives it some character. Uh, it has the little uh, felt pads on the bottom, which is cool and uh, you know a little sign of age there on it But it, it's cool because it it's a nice charm uh, So I'll put that there for a second. I'm gonna pass up on this one even though it is Virgin Mary But the face is a little bit worn there uh, and so uh, to me it uh, takes away from some of the uh, Quality I would like it to have and so you know, maybe someone else will like it, but I'll leave it for that person plus it's four bucks uh, but this one here I really like because you know for me a lot of it is about the facial expression and I love this this angelic look uh, the beauty really you know stands out on it and it's very spiritual and look at the back you could you know put stuff in it it's really neat and for just a buck I cannot pass on this so this is ceramic really great pieces here uh, great prices too my gosh all right, we have some other figures to look at here. Uh, this one I'm gonna pass on because you can see the hand is uh, chopped off of it. So that's a problem. And someone did something with trying to glue that hand back on there. So yeah, that one is uh, not in good shape. This one is the most interesting to me. Um, 
it is separated from the base, but that's no big deal because you could just you know put it right back on there for display purposes. I think this might be copper because if you look closely, you could see it has this like aqua green patina that happens with copper items as they age. So there's a lot of horse fans out there who will probably like this. So I'm gonna pick this one up. Um, I'm gonna pass on these two because even though they technically are probably vintage, they still look a little too modern to me. And this one down here, which looks to be either Moses or God, I'm not sure, but um, it has some damage to the back and they want 15 bucks for it. So uh, I'm gonna pass. There's a naked doll back there. I'm gonna try to keep that off screen. And then uh, the fountain I'm gonna pass on. All right, there's one last item that's jumping out to me that I wanna grab before we go. And uh, the colors on this are absolutely incredible and really nice age to it. Uh, this is one I would keep in this frame because the frame is also uh, beautiful. I mean, it's pretty heavy, but 10 bucks. I mean, this is really nice. I'd probably like take this black stuff off here, but it's got the original wire that I would keep on it. Wow, this has been an incredible day. What an estate sale, folks. All right, we're all done, all checked out. This place is absolutely incredible. Uh, that's a separate barn that they have on the property. There's 19 total acres here. Uh, there's so much to explore, but uh, you know, for us, it's really just the, the house contents. But in terms of property wise, you know, it's just, there's, there's a lot of stuff here. It's an amazing place, wow. All right, so I'm heading on over to the Primetime Treasure Mobile because uh, they were nice enough to tell me I could bring my uh, car down to driveway here and load everything up from the garage area. So that'll save me a trip up this driveway, lugging all that uh, heavy stuff. So I'll uh, get everything in there and then I'll tell you the total price. All right, so I got everything in these two big boxes plus this framed art for a grand total of $235. Now, one of the reasons that it cost a few hundred bucks is because I came to the first day of the sale, so things cost a little bit more because of that. Also, there was just so much stuff to go through in that house, so I really load it up, so things add up. And in addition to that, I was spending some time uh, investing into some pieces that you know cost a little bit more money up front. So for example, the duck for $25, the lamp for 15, the cast iron clown bank for $40. And uh, there were a lot of DVDs that I got. Now they were mostly a dollar a piece, but one thing to tell you, and I don't like when they do this by the way, but uh, when it was a box set, so if there were three in a set or four in a set or five in a set, instead of it being a dollar, it was however many dvds there were so for example you know the uh, uh, uh downtown abbey one with the three dvds plus the bonus that one wound up costing four bucks so um now they weren't charging more if there were multiple dvds in a dvd case it wasn't that but if there were more than one dvd case in the box then they were charging a dollar you know but whatever it's fine overall for everything that I got here, I'm very happy with the uh, overall price and the selection of um, items here. Wow, incredible. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I am just having the best time here and uh, just enjoying hearing the peaceful sounds of all the nature around me. There's waterfalls and stuff going by. I mean, it's just been a great, great day. So it's fun to take you on these journeys with me. There will be more uh, coming in the future. Let me know what your favorite item was that I found today or maybe something I didn't pick up that you would have picked up. Uh, let me know. I uh, love looking at all your comments and uh, we'll check out how Daisy's doing when we go back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters. Uh, but uh, let's head on over there. I've got a long way back. Here we go, folks. Further proof that Daisy actually does leave the top of the couch. <laughs> That's what she looks like. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> when she waits for me to come home. Hey, Daisy. <laughs> What's going on, Daisy? All right, let's come inside and see how you're doing. How are you? Hey, Daisy, how are you? <laughs> oh, who's that, Daisy? Who's that? Is that Bernie? Is that Bernie? That's your friend Bernie? Is that Bernie? While Daisy's taking care of guarding the treasures from Bernie. <laughs> oh no, you're actually gonna come over here? Chef Daisy, oh, she smells something. What do we got here? I'm gonna show you how I make a prime time hot dog. Uh, I don't think I've ever shown you any cooking before, but uh, these are the Sabret hot dogs. Uh, the skinless beefs are really good. I also really like Nathan's uh, when you can find them, but they're out in my grocery store right now. There's Daisy right there, by the way. So here's a secret. My dad taught me this is just split the hot dog down the middle. You just use a knife and just slice it. Not all the way through, but I'd say like three quarters of the way through. And then when you put it on a grill, you just put them on face down. So we'll go over here and do that. And so face down. So what's going to happen is that when, uh, when they cook, they're going to split open and then it really gives it a nice look and it's great also for uh, putting these uh, cheese slices on. Don't get like cheese whiz or like, you know, grated cheese to put on there, like shredded cheese. Get these slices because they fit in there really good on the grill. So let's cook these up and uh, Daisy's gonna keep guarding the treasures here and we'll check on the hot dogs in a minute. Hey Daisy, how are those hot dogs coming? <laughs> How are those hot dogs up? <laughs> How are those hot dogs coming? <laughs> I just can't stop laughing. Every time I see Daisy, I just start laughing. I love her so much. Here, there you go. There you go with daddy. <laughs> All right, Daisy, let's shut the hot dogs. Let's see what's going on here. All right, okay. So once you see that they split open like that and they start to bubble, that's when you know they're ready to turn. So we're gonna get our tongs not thongs, tongs. I'm not really lefty, but we'll just make it work. And there we go, perfect. So now these are like a perfect receptacle for the cheese. So we're gonna get the cheese right on top of there. All right, lay it on like so. And this won't take too much longer. Just close it for a little bit and then they're gonna be incredible. All right, Daisy, I think it might be ready. We're gonna go check it out. Ready? She's paying attention to the birds. But we gotta pay attention to the dogs. And yes, they are ready. I'm gonna turn this off now. It's bubbling up nice. I like when it gets a little bit of brown on it. I like my hot dogs well done. So uh, two are for me, one is for Little Miss Primetime. So she loves a primetime cheese dog. And we're gonna get these on the buns. All right, there we go. They are all set, got some lemon and limeade mixed up. It's been a long day, looking forward to munching down on these cheese dogs. And uh, let me say a final goodbye with Daisy. All right, everyone. Well, I hope that you had a great time out today. I had an absolute blast. It's good to give you a different uh, view of Daisy. And um, uh, we still gotta eat those cheese dogs. So she's getting hungry, as you could see, and tired. So I don't wanna keep her waiting much longer. I'll see you back at the next one, everyone. <laughs> Take care.